Okay, so welcome. Uh, this is Charles No slash Sifu Hotman on Reddit or Memnite Shyamalan on Twitter, and uh, I am playing Hearthstone today. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm playing the Frost Mage deck that everyone seems to hate, or at least my interpretation of it. Um, it seems like the consistent vein amongst that deck, or in that deck, is that you're playing spells that freeze your opponent's dudes. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, use the free spells to keep their dudes locked down so you don't have to get hit by them. Um, and your health is a pretty big resource in this one. So I'm playing against a Paladin this time. As you can see, my deck does have a Nixia in it. Um, on top of that, it's got Alexstrasza and, Ra and Ragnaros. Uh, Ragnaros and Alexstrasza are a bit more predictable. And Nixia is in there because uh, I don't really have a whole lot of creatures in the deck. So she does allow me to establish a board presence uh, late game on an empty field uh, once I've been able to mop it up with Blizzard and the other removal spells in the deck. Um, Sorcerer's Apprentice and no Novice Engineer, of course, are in the deck. Uh, Novice Engineer because, well, he's just kind of fantastic as far as a two-drop cantrip. Uh, if anybody, any of you played the old WoW card game, uh, it's kind of like Parvink, uh, except for the fact that he doesn't have Taunt. Uh, Parvink was kind of the best. Now, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to decide, I think I'm going to coin and play my Engineer on turn one, just because I want the card. He's got the 1-1 one, one Divine Shield guy. I'm going to be able to trade for it, uh, or at least poke it with my power on turn two and trade my guy for it. I don't really want to be running out my, uh, you know, my mages at present. Uh, those guys need to stay around until later, sort of give me more flexibility with mana at present. It's a little irrelevant, and all it does is open them up to getting killed. Not surprised that he poked me here. It's, you know, a bit uh, expected. He could have poked my Engineer, but then that just means that they trade next turn. Uh, the advantage here is that uh, I get to take out that guy, and if he swings there, my Engineer's taken two of his cards out and draw me a card, which is super valuable. Um, now, it doesn't really matter at this point, um, you know, if he does or doesn't attack me. So I see he's going to put the Protector on there, and... If he's smart, he'll attack my Engineer just to get that out of the way and protect his uh, board presence. Okay, so he's just going to poke me. That's, I mean, that's also acceptable. He's got two one ones with Divine Shields. So that's going to be a bit problematic to deal with. Right now, my, my main concern is just keeping the board lightly clear. Uh, I don't want to be you know, using any you know, freezes or anything like that. I'm certainly not about to Frost Nova two one ones. <laughs> so I'll just let him keep poking me for the time being because... It's irrelevant, I mean, I, you're not dead until you have less than one life, and in this deck you get the luxury of not being dead until you've got less than one life three times. Um, you know, us usually two times, but sometimes three times, if you're lucky. Uh, so, I mean, if they didn't have Divine Shield there, that Arcane Explosion would be alright, but let's take a look at what we've got here. Uh, I'm going to poke there, and I might Nova. Yeah. Seems right. Uh, now what we're doing is we're just going to go through this whole game here. Hopefully get into that late bit. Um, to clean up, of course, I've got the two Pyroblasts because you know this deck is not complete without Pyroblasts. I like to use my Fireballs to throw at people's faces. Um, unless they drop something particularly sizable, but this does just appear to be your run-of-the-mill Paladin aggro deck. Uh, at present... You know, I could Blizzard and leave him with a 2-2, but I don't think that he's committed enough to the field. He's got three cards in hand. Um, you know, the last thing I want is for him to have, uh, you know, Dark Iron Dwarf or something like that coming over me. So, that sounded probably kind of awful. Ugh. <laughs> so, I just don't want, um, you know, to Blizzard on an empty field. So, I'll poke that to sort of clear up his Divine Shield set up for next turn. I mean, he could take me to 15, but if there's a huge issue with that, I do have the ice blocks as well as, um, you know, I do have Alex Straza in there. I'd like to be using Alex Straza to put my opponent at 15, but if need be, I can definitely use her to get back in the game. Um, so, I do just go ahead and, uh, you know, shoot that guy and cast my ice block. That way, you know, barring some completely unforeseen con... Uh, situation here, I'm able to survive. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, what's he playing here? Dark Iron Dwarf. Okay, so I mean, that's five. That means that I'm going to be going down to 
uh, you know, 12. So let's take a look here, get these hits in. The important thing is uh, when I Blizzard, it's going to kill all six of those dudes and freeze his Dark Iron Dwarf, so he's not beating on me with that next turn, which is fantastic. Um, so I'll go ahead and Blizzard, and six of his cards are gone. Um, I'll be he, the Paladin passive is very very good, but I don't have to worry about eating. Uh, well, it's not even a passive; it's the Paladin active because there's no such thing as a passive in this game right now. Uh, True Silver Champion, it's a four two sword thing. He's probably going to use it to beat on me because it seems reasonable. I'm low as far as he can tell. I'm you know out of this game at this point. Uh, he knows I have that ice block, like. It's pretty apparent that the, that that is what's in what's under there. So when he swings and uh, pops that block, he's then got free reign to you know, sort of work his way around my sweet, supple, mage-like body. So I'll go ahead and play my little wizard guy, and I'll freeze him because I don't want him to kill my wizard guy, and he gets three damage on him. Um, from the looks of this game, I'm probably going to be using Alexstrasza on myself, so I don't want to be, you know, you know, batting around the bush there. I do want to start getting damage on him because it's going to take a lot. I could curve uh, Alexstrasza and then play Ragnaros on nine and use my removal to keep his to clear his field and just kill him then. Um, but that's you know fairly situational, and it really depends on what kind of damage he's going to be putting on me on the next turn. Uh, so I think I pay, play my other mage here, because I do have the ability to kill his two dudes, and that'll keep my mage around. Um, you know, basically, uh, that one's a 1-2, one I really am not sure I want to be attacking with it, because it's going to draw him a card, but he does only have one card in hand. So I'll go ahead and rip two. There's a blizzard, I've got five resources, but blizzard now costs three, um, and mirror entity costs zero, even if I have one mage. So what I may do, um, in fact, yeah, I'm going to Blizzard, and then I'm going to swing into his other 3-3 three, three and passive his ones. So that leaves him with an empty field, and I have the 3-2 out. He can then, you know, swing at me with his True Silver Champion, or he can swing at my 3-2. Um, but, you know, if I Mirror Entity, that's actually going to... Eliminate that issue. So I'll go ahead and give him a card, and then give him two O2s to to attack. Um, that'll slow him down for a bit, and that gives me two layers of protection in the form of my two taunt dudes and my ice block that's floating on me right now. So in the long run, what I'm looking at is a much simpler, uh, you know, late game. I'm starting to sort of wind him down as far as the the cards that he has, and I should be able to overpower him um, based on what I've got here. If, you know, by chance he has another True Silver Champion, I have the Frostbolt to sort of keep him under control. Um, but I'd really like to be playing Ragnaros next turn. Um, and then that should put me on track to use Alexstrasza to get back to 15. But I really don't want to be using Alexstrasza on myself until my Ice Block is triggered, just to get maximum value from that. Um, so this turn, I think... What's going to happen is, I think I need to trade with his elder guy, and then I need to kill his 2-2 two -two taunt, or I need to frostbolt his elder guy, kill his 2-2 two -two taunt, and then let Ragnaros uh, get rowdy. I don't want to be using Alexstrasza, because um, he's high, and I could technically Alexstrasza and then you know hit him for 12, but... That's a bit greedy, and we might as well play safe and keep those fireballs back in case things don't really go according to plan. Uh, of course, I just, I'm bad. I threw one at his face. Uh, <laughs> don't know what I was doing there. Um, yeah, long story short, sometimes my mouth and brain are not on the same page. This is actually the first time I've done this uh, whole recording thing. I did it previously. If you guys saw, I had that Druid video. Um, where Innervate Alarm Robot and a Druid. I mean, Innervate Alarm Robot and a big dude. I actually got Gruel on turn two. It happened like three times after I stopped recording it, like immediately in a row. It was so stupid. Uh, so Rags to his face. Um, it puts me in a pretty good position. I have Fireball, and then I, you know, I can Fireball him to the dome. Uh, I can also, and he's going to Equality. That's beautiful. Equality. 
seems like every time Rhinoros hits against Paladin, uh, they're like, oh, well, quality consecrate. And I'm like, yippee! So I'm at six. He's got Sword of Justice. Um, he's not going to beat, which is, you know, I'm okay with that. Uh, what I really want to be doing right now is drawing cards, because I need to get into more action, and he's not going to do anything other than hit me for one. Uh, five tops, unless he could hit me for six, which would then just trigger my thing, and I'll be using Alex Strauss on myself if he goes, uh, you know, 4-2 charge guy and Dark Iron Dwarf. So I'll play the Drake and draw on Anixia. Um, that actually sets me up pretty nicely if I need to rebuild a board presence. Once I, you know, continue to whittle him down, That'll be all right. I'll go ahead and take him to 15 now, so that makes my job a bit easier. Uh, what I'm really hoping for is that he doesn't interact with my with my Drake, so that I can punch him for four and, you know, God's willing, rip a Pyroblast and get there. Uh, that's really my game plan at present, draw a Pyroblast. Because <laughs> um, it's not looking great, but that is, uh, those are big guys. And that also is a lot of stuff on the board. So, I'm glad I got plus one spell power, because I do have the Cone of Cold. Um, you know, what I what I should do is I should probably play my Mana Worm first. Um, let me, hold on. Bleh. I could actually, I could swing with my 4-4 four four into his 6-6. Six six. Uh, if I Cone of Cold, and that'll clear that up, and I'll go ahead and Cone of And do you know what actually makes a lot more sense? Playing the Mana Worm first, because that actually opens it up to where Mana Worm would then trade with his 4-2, and I can shoot his other other dude. But I didn't play the Mana Worm first, because bad. So, there's that. Uh, so I guess he's going to swing into my Mana Worm. Or he's going to just he's going to shoot it with hammer. I'm okay because I'm at six life right now. <laughs> I am fine with all of that happening. So what we're looking at here is, um, basically if he doesn't hit me this turn and trigger my freaking ice block, I'm dropping a Nixia. That's what's happening right now. Da -da -da -da. I mean, yeah, if I drop a Nixia, then I get a bunch of whelps, and that actually allows me to get some profitable trades in. I'm, plus, he's in a position right now, he's pretty low as well, where he probably needs to run everything into a Nixia to, you know, take care of her. He may have some pump spells, but, you know, who knows. If he does that, I still have six whelps in play. So that's going to the face. So he's looking to trigger my ice block if it's there. Um, which it is, of course. So, ta-da, I'm immune, because Mage is totally not overpowered right now. Um, so, Blessing of Kings, so I'll make it a 7-7, and get Anixia down to 1, and he'll, like, hammer it or something. Or he'll Blessing of Kings again, and make that thing an 11-11. Um, which, for the record, is Problemopolis, because it kind of invalidates my whole, I'm going to use Alexstrasza to pop back up to 15 idea. So, I definitely need to use these whelps as sort of a machine gun to clear his field out. So what I can do is I can kill his 11-11 pretty easily, just throw three whelps at it. I, I'm fine with that trade. I think I'm going to poke his 4-2 with one whelp to pop the shield and then put the other two underneath of it. And that'll take care of that. And then he's left with a 2-2 and a 1-1 and I'll just put myself at 15. So what he's got at this point is a much weaker field than I do. So hopefully Alex Strauss will just be able to get everything done at this point and we'll be able to continue on with our lives. So let's see what he's doing. Oh, of course, an 8-8 eight eight on my side and inequality from his. I just imagine this like one soldier running up and just being like, die fucking dragon. Um, so that happens. Argent commander, which is poor Blum. He's poor Blum. So... I'm going to take 4 and go to 11. So I'm on a pretty significant clock right now. Uh, Frost Nova does help because it gives me an out at least for a turn. I can buy a turn. Let's draw some cards and see what happens. Uh, cantrip Dude into Azure Drake, which is also a cantrip, so that's valuable. Uh, I think I definitely poke that just so that I can set that up for next turn. Now if I Frost Nova here, I mean, he, 
even if he draws another charge guy, I'm not going to die. So I'm just going to play my Drake and draw a card, which is a nice block, which does, uh, again, give me a lot more in the way of not dying next turn. Um, now he's probably, I mean, if I was him, I'd probably kill my Drake, because it's going to, I mean, that's a 4-4, and he's at 15, so he can't really be playing around with that. If I rip a Pyroblast with that thing on board and hit him for 4, I can then Pyroblast him for 11. Uh, so it looks like he's going to do it, or he's not. I'm okay with this. So I now have Ice Block and Frost Nova, so what I want to do is guarantee that I can buy myself 2 turns, because I'm going to get a hit in here, untap, get another hit in, Frost Nova, get another hit in. So I'm in a position now, because I know he spent both of his 4-2 haste guys, to where I am going to survive and, pro and kill him with these two. Um, you know, really, my I just need to do what I can to keep him from attacking these guys. So what I want to do is... I don't want to. I don't want to frost over right now. That's not. That's not worth it for me. But I do want to play my two. My O2 taunt dudes, and I do want to ice block, because two layers of protection is going to give me, you know, a lot of wiggle room. And he's got to get rid of those two dudes before he can mess with these. With this five power, and that frost nova is going to buy me the extra turn um, that I need, because I'm going to get one attack step, frost nova, and then a third attack step. So unless he rips, draws something with taunt, um, this should be game. Of course, he could also draw removal, uh, but I really hope that that doesn't happen to you. This, um, you know, this really could... It's not, like, super locked down, but he's played both of his hammers. He's got True Silver Champion, which opens up another attack. Uh, it looks like he's going to be able to take me to 2. He's going to go to 12, so now I, I'm out of, you know... So if I rip Pyroblast, he's still dead. Um, so let's see what happens. Ta-da! Frost Mage forever! This deck is really, um... You know, some people would say it's overpowered. I definitely will agree that it is probably the most degenerate strategy in this game right now. However, um, you know, I'm, I'm not really certain that, you know, we're really in a position where there's anything else that's quite so bad. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, follow me on Twitter at, at, M at Memnite Shyamalan. Uh, Shyamalan is misspelled. I'll go ahead and put it into the video. As well as uh, follow me on YouTube or also on Twitch TV as Grindel's Bacon. I really need like one name. So you guys tell me which name in the comments you like best. Uh, Sifu Hotman, Grindel's Bacon, Memnite Shyamalan, or Charles No. <laughs> because why not have four different names? I've just used different aliases in every game I play. And, um, you know, I'll see about getting that sort of streamlined for you so you have less to f mess around with. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, and I hope that this was somewhat entertaining. And, uh, yeah, see you next time.